Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 28, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Based on a question from a couple weeks ago from Michael Vance about whether or not it's safe to require TLS or turn off older versions of TLS for email, I did a little experiment to figure out whether or not large email providers are now accepting email using TLS and if they are supporting TLS 1.2. Over the last few years, of course, there has been a lot of emphasis on TLS configurations for web servers, but uh, other servers like email, of course, are using TLS too, and they often have been sort of neglected. And what I found kind of confirms that, yes, most email providers and some around 90% are supporting TLS, are supporting TLS 1.2, but there are a couple outliers. Now I've found only one provider that supports TLS and only supports TLS 1.0. There are a few providers, however, that don't support TLS at all. And of course that makes it difficult to enforce the use of TLS. The largest ISP within the United States that doesn't support TLS is United Online. That's Juno and NetZero. There are a couple of ISPs in China. Yahoo Japan does not support TLS. And then there are a few other countries like uh, one Brazilian, a couple Italian ISPs that do not support TLS at all. Now, after posting this, I got some feedback from a uh, couple other uh, users via Twitter. One stated that Denmark now requires TLS for email and the state government in Germany just announced last week that they will only use TLS 1.2 for email and reject all other TLS connections. Now, based on my results, I personally think it's a little bit too early to outright require a TLS. You will run into some issues. I don't have a good handle as to how many email users are behind these ISPs that don't support TLS, but uh, I would think that all the large ones like Google Hotmail, Yahoo in the US and AOL and so on are supporting TLS. So you probably got far more than 90% of email users that are using an email provider that does support TLS. So if you have any experiences with requiring TLS or if you have any sort of logs that show how many connections outbound or inbound to your mail server are taking advantage of TLS, in particular start TLS, then uh, well, uh, let me know. And Malwarebytes is reporting about a newish Android Trojan that they're calling XHelper. Now, typically when you're installing an application on Android, you're downloading an APK file, an Android package file. This particular Trojan arrives as a DEX, a DEX file or Delvic executable file. Now, typically an APK file is just a set of zipped DEX files. In this particular case, the DEX file is then converted into an executable which is well a typical for DEX files in particular on newer versions of Android, older versions. They have sort of their own little virtual machine. So similar uh, to how Java bytecode is being executed that does execute these DEX files directly. But overall, the goal here is of course to obfuscate the file content. These DEX files that are delivered for XHelper are also encrypted. With all this obfuscation, Malwarebytes actually had a hard time figuring out what the Trojan really does. But as far as they can tell, it's mostly a downloader. So it's the first stage that is installed on the victim's system and it's then downloading additional malware as needed. Malwarebytes detected it on over 30,000 devices. So this is just among the devices that have Malwarebytes installed. So there are probably a lot more out there. 
And even with so many devices being affected by this, there is no clear lead on how they got infected, but that turns out to be sort of one of the ongoing problems with Android. While you do have the ability to install arbitrary software much more easily than in iOS, that's also of course an opportunity to install malware. And SecureWorks has a quick summary of what they're calling the Lyceum Threat Group or Lyceum, not sure how to pronounce it. Well, uh, this particular threat group targeted energy companies in the Middle East. The reason I think it's uh, kind of interesting is that it shows again how some of uh, the sort of more targeted and a little bit more clever phishing attempts work. In this case, it's an attachment that actually does show sort of talks about security best practices, the 25 worst passwords as an Excel spreadsheet and things like that. And that's actually used as a phishing campaign. So in some ways, they're sort of turning the training a little bit against you. Nothing terribly sophisticated as far as the exploits go, but what really sort of differentiates these more targeted and sometimes sophisticated attacks is not always the exploits they're using. It's really more the work that they are doing ahead of the attack, where they're coming up with nice targeted documents like this. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.